Yes, this is John G. Sutton. Got a bit of a nervous twitch again there. Listen, uh, today I'm going to talk about tales from the jails. I want to talk a little bit about uh, prison quarters. Because when I was uh, in the prison service, you were provided with free housing. That is, uh, you got a standard three bedroom, usually a three bedroom semi, something like that. Reasonable property, usually, usually. And uh, that's where you lived, free of charge. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, when I left the army, of course, I didn't have a house. Yeah, so. That's what we did. We, I joined the prison service and uh, when I was at uh, Manchester, HM Prison Manchester, I went there in, back there in 19, late 1976. Of course, by 77, I was living in Cheatham Hill in a house there. I've previously spoken a little bit about the experiences I had whilst living in that house. Uh, strange experiences. But then I moved from there to a place called Flixton which is uh, a suburb of Ermston, uh, Manchester M41, I believe. Yeah, It's in Trafford, you know. So anyway, I moved into this house. It was a reasonably modern, semi-detached house, three bedrooms with a garage at the, at the front. And uh, I hadn't been there very long. Yeah, In fact, I'd only been there perhaps a week. And somebody came knocking on my door. Hi, I've been sent here about the uh, the insurance, and I want to talk to you about hot life insurance. So who the hell sent you? This is uh, a home office property, you know. What do you want? So the guy said, "Oh, I'm an insurance salesman." You know, I said, "Yeah, but who sent you? Who told you I lived here? Who told you I work for the home office? And what do you want?" He said, "Well, I'm just talk to you about life insurance." I said, "Well." I'm Perhaps I don't want to talk to you about life insurance. Before we go any further, who sent you? Anyway, with that, he about turned and did a disappearing act. Somebody had obviously said, oh yeah, go and see that guy. He's only just moved in. He'll have some insurance off. Got to be joking. Yeah. My brother-in-law was a, an insurance agent. Anyway, he had, a, he had his own uh, company in... Uh, Ramsbottom, believe it or not, not the big agency in Ramsbottom. Anyway, if I wanted any insurance, that's where I would be going. So anyway, I'd only been in there a short while, and uh, we got to meet meet some of the neighbours. They're nice people, you know. Uh, the the neighbours to one side, they were not in the Home Office prison service. No, they were standard civilians. And uh, the lady that lived at the end house, she was a, a, a civilian. I was walking past one day, and she spoke to me before. She said, "John, I want I want you to look at something here with me." So I went I went to see. I said, uh, "What what is the problem?" She said, "Well, it, it's very strange." She said, "You know the people that just moved in the house over the road, and I'd seen them. It was a strange affair. It was a prison officer's house, you know. And it was a prison office. In fact, a senior prison officer." who'd moved in, and I'd seen him moved in, he moved in on the back of an open top, like a coal wagon truck, you know, with all his furniture and all his bedding and everything like that, strapped down with ropes, open, moving in like the Beverly Hillbillies, you know, so I just didn't think too much about it, just a bit strange, you know, but anyway, I, uh, I said, well, what is it? She said, uh, what are you doing this evening? Are you doing are you anything? She said, well, only I'll be watching TV with my wife, you know, because it was a weekend, you know, I was working on the, on the Saturday on that particular occasion. I said, why? She said, well, would you come about 10 o'clock tonight and just knock on my door? She said, I want you to watch something. I said, well, if you insist, I'll do it, you know, it's about 10 o'clock. I told you to get on with the neighbours, you know. Ten o'clock at night, come I said to my wife, say it won't be a minute. Lady up at the end of the road wants to wants me to look at something when about ten o'clock and I hear I'm gonna go and see it. So I went and knocked on her door, she said, Just stand here with me. And I stood on her front door and she said, If you look across there and and and, and there was 
where this guy, this senior officer, had moved in. And round about 10 o'clock at night, the, the curtains, because the, the, the curtains were drawn, you, the curtains were drawn back, yeah? And the lights were on, yeah? And this guy, this is the absolute truth, this guy and his wife came into the room, stark bollock naked, and started wrestling with the lights on and the windows, the, the curtains wide open. And this woman says, it happens on Saturday nights, around about 10 o'clock at night. They come in and they're wrestling about there. Big bare asses up in the air, dick flashing around, big fanny. I thought, God, God's sake, is he mad? You know what I mean? This didn't make any sense. I said, I'm, listen, I, said, uh, I hardly know this man. It's not for me to go and, and tell him that this behaviour is inappropriate. I said, because he's obviously, he's fully aware, you know, that people can see him because he's opened the curtains and put the lights on. Anyway, I distanced myself from that and said nothing. I probably should have done, but I can't. Well, can you go up to somebody and say, do you mind not wrestling naked <laughs> with the curtains open? You can't do it, can you? Anyway, about three doors down on the other side, there was a prison officer there. I shall. No names, no pack drill. It's a standard rule of mine, you know. Although some people I will name because they're bastards and they deserve to be named. But this person, he wasn't. He was just a bit strange, shall we say. Anyway, it was a, it was a Saturday afternoon and there was a, a fun fair on just over the road from where we were uh, on the estate. I'm not named out to any estate, but it was in Flixton, yeah? And uh, it was just over the road and there was a fun fair on. And it's Saturday afternoon, about one o'clock in the afternoon, and my wife says to me, I get hours at home, you know, John, come and have a look at this, have a look at this. So I went to the front of the house where my wife was, doing the garden or something, and there was this fella, absolutely, in with his hat on, full prison uniform, tie, got the, the chains, the, the, the truncheon strap, the full Monty, dressed up like that, big shiny boots, and he's marching up and down the street, and his wife came out of the house, and off they went. He went in full uniform to the to the fair, the, the fun fair, marching round the fun fair in his prison officer's uniform on his day off. I mean, you've got to be mad, haven't you, to do that? You've got to be crazy. I kept my uniform in the prison, in a little locker I had, stuffed it in, you know, and I come back in a tracksuit. I used to either run back, cycle back, or, you know, occasionally I was in a oh, I had a red tracksuit on. In fact, one day I was coming back from Strange Ways, it was Saturday afternoon, be about <clears throat> quarter five, five o'clock, something like that, finished work, you know, <clears throat> driving back past Old Trafford, and there's all these thousands of people running around. And I was in, a, I had a little mini at the time. This great big guy gets hold of the mist, starts rocking it backwards and forwards, shouting, you red bastard. I went the window and I said, what's up? I said, I'm on my way home from work. He said, you're a United supporter. I said, I have never seen a game of football in my life. I can't stand it. I said, just please leave me alone. I'm going home from work. Oh, he said, I'm sorry, mate. <laughs> I ran off to somebody else's car and started beating the shit out of that. Oh, Christ. What a place. I mean, football maniacs, yeah? My brother was in the Mounted Police at the time. And he used to tell me he was on—he was a sergeant in the Mounted Police for a while. And uh, he, he said, we used to just go in on the horses with a great big truncheon. And if they didn't get out of the way, he had a truncheon. Boosh. Oh, well, I mean, that's not entertainment, is it? Saturday afternoon, how you go and watch the watch the football with your kids and get attacked by a big bloke on the back of a of a, a gigantic horse? Because my brother's about six foot four, <laughs> the big truncheon. Yeah, madness. So anyway, those are just a few of the just two of the little stories from me being in prison quarters. I mean, and that was the that was what was happening. 
naked wrestling and people walking around on Saturday afternoon dressed up like jailers. Yeah, I mean, it's hardly edifying, is it? Yeah. Anyway, Tales from the Jails. My name's John G. Sutton, and you can see my book on Amazon, you know. It's called Psychic Screw. See you soon. <laughs>